In this video, we are going to see how to use Next.js server actions. We are going to create a fully fledged app and we are going to install Next.js, create an app and see Next.js server actions in action. Let's move on to our computer screen and let's get started. All right, guys, so I'm inside of my computer screen and the very first step that I'm going to take is creation of a Next.js app. So without thinking much about what server actions are and how we are going to use it, let's create a new Next.js project. So I'm going to create a new terminal inside this code playground folder and let's zoom in a bit so that you can see what I'm typing and let's open a new tab. And in this new tab, I'm simply going to say create next app, create next app. I know how to create a new next app, but again, I'm going to show you how you can create a new next app when you don't know the list of commands. Sometimes you don't even remember the commands. So in those cases, you must know and you must use these commands because they are going to make your life much, much easier. So we are going to use NPX. So let's use NPX and I'm going to use the app router. So let's copy this command and let's paste it here. And it is going to ask me about different settings of my project. So it says that you want to install it. What is going to be your project name? My project name is going to be server actions demo. No, I don't want to use TypeScript, no ESLint, yes Tailwind, no SRC and yes app router. I know I don't want to customize the default import alias and this is going to take a bit and it is going to create a new project. So let's wait for it to finish and I'll be back. All right. So it says success created server actions demo at this location, which means that my project has been created. Let's do code dot or rather code server actions demo, which will open this folder in VS code. Let's press enter. And this is going to open this folder in VS code and our app is ready. Let's do yarn dev. So yarn dev to start this app yarn dev. And I can now see my app on local host colon 3000 and yes this is how our app looks let's change the default page.js file i'm going to remove everything written inside this return statement and let's replace it with dev dot color let's do one thing let's do one thing let's go to tailblocks.cc so i'm going to go to tailblocks.cc which will give you ready to use components for Tailwind CSS. And I'm going to keep this really very simple because this is not a UI front end tutorial. I don't want to waste time creating awesome UIs. I have other videos for that. Let's see if we have any template for the header. I just saw the footer. I'm going to use a very basic header. I like this header. Let's copy the code to this header and I'm going to simply paste it here. And yes, you'll have to replace class is equal to with class name is equal to. So let's do change all occurrences class name is equal to. And I'm going to keep this very minimal. Let's grab another component, which will be a form because I want to demonstrate how next year server actions work. So let me see if I can find a contact page. Yes, this contact page has a form or rather let's go for this one. This is even simpler. So let's go for this one and let's paste it somewhere here. Uh, note that I'm not creating separate components. I just want to demonstrate how all this works. So I'm not creating components separately. And for some reason I have copied some extra text. So let me remove all this extra text and let's see how our app looks. It is giving an error for some reason I have made some mistake here. Let's do format document and let's see what is missing here. Okay. So there are some issues with the code. The very first thing that I want to fix is let's, let's do view word wrap so that I can change this input tag. We'll have to make it a self closing tag. Let's do it. Let's go ahead and do it. And VR must be a self closing tag as well. Yeah, there is one challenge with tailblocks.cc that you will have to do all this manually. But again, you can automate this process. You can write a Python code or JavaScript code, or uh, it's really very basic programming. You can simply give your program this code as an input and it should output the fixed code. You will have to detect all this. And this is a very good programming problem in my opinion. If you uh, happen to solve it, just let me know. 
let's see if everything is working fine or not yes it has dark mode turned on and let me tell you how to fix it just go to public styles where is styles i'm searching for styles okay so global .css. you will have to remove this from global .css. let's come to the point and let's talk about server actions what exactly is nextjs server actions you will have to understand why server actions in nextjs so previously if you had a form in nextjs you will have to create an api and then you will call that api from your client component by default all the components in nextjs are now server components and if you are creating a form you will have to create a client component then call it from the server component then create an api and you will have to write code manually to call that api whenever the button is clicked next year server actions simplifies all this process and i'll show you how let us say we have this form and we want to fill this form and we want to store the data inside the database uh, let me show you how to do it uh, what i'll do is i'll create a form and i'll say action is equal to just like we used to do in php let me show you how all these things work one interesting thing about this form is that it is not wrapped inside of a form tag so let me wrap it inside of a form tag so let's do it form instead of dev i'm using form here and i'll say action is equal to i'll say action is equal to and we are going to give it an action i'll show you what the action is going to be but let's change the closing dev to form because this is now a form and let's see if everything is fixed or not so it is complaining about why the action is empty let's reward it let's reward it and see whether the ui is fine or not the very first thing is that ui should be fine and yes ui is fine i'll say action is equal to my action so my action is going to be a server action and this is by default a server component okay so as you can see that i can create a new server action just like it is created here let's go to next year's documentation and see how we can create a server action so let's now move on to the documentation and copy this server action and i'll show you why this is not going to work if i use it exactly like it is shown in the code here okay so i've pasted it and let me rename it to my action so my action and whenever i submit this form this function should be called but this is not going to work as is the reason is that this is an experimental feature and you will have to change this part inside your next.config.js to make it work so let's go to our next.config.js and let's paste it here so my next config will have experimental server actions true and i'll also have to restart my server to make it work so we'll have to restart the server for it to work and yes now if we submit this form if we submit this form we'll get the form data inside this data and all this code is going to execute on the server so let's see what the problem is we are getting some errors what are these errors let me fix these errors all these errors are related to ui i guess these errors are occurring because i have not used the correct attributes for react so i'll have to replace a stroke line cap with stroke line cap with the the camel case i'll have to do all these things manually so let's do it let's do it because i want to show you how exactly these things are working so let's say stroke dash and let me select it and we'll say change all occurrences and this will change all the occurrences and in fact it is going to select it and i'm going to simply press backspace i'm going to press shift right arrow key which will select one character right after stroke and then i'm going to simply right click go to command palette and i'll say transform to uppercase and this character will be transformed to uppercase now i'm going to reload this and i think i will get some more errors because some at some places this class is equal to is not replaced with class name is equal to i don't know why this happened but let's say change all occurrences and i'm going to change this to class name is equal to let's reload this page and see if we have any more errors keep them coming i'll fix all the errors Control f for is equal to we'll have to replace for is equal to with html for is equal to so let's select it change all occurrences but you'll have to be very careful whenever you are making changes like this because when you say change all occurrences literally all the occurrences of that text is going to be changed so let's say html4 is equal to and let's see if we have any further errors 
And yes, the console is clean now. We don't have any more errors. We are good to go. So let's now simply fill this form and we are going to press the button. And let me change this button to submit. So instead of button, I want to call it submit. And you can make changes to the UI however you like. Okay, so I, I'll, I'll change this to submit. And I'll say console.log data, D-A-T-A data. And also I want to make sure that this is a new tab so that I can see whatever is being logged to the server console. Let's close this global.css and also let's close this next.config.js and let's refresh this page and see if we can fill in some data here and see it in action. So let's say Harry, Harry at codewithharry.com and let's also say, hey, I am fine. And let's click on submit. Nothing seemed to happen, but let's see if we can see something here. Yes, we can see this form data here and this is executing on the server, which means that you can execute any code, call your database, hit your database, make anything that you would have done using the API. And this is as simple as creating a function saying use server directive and simply doing whatever you would have done inside the API. This is very, very similar to PHP, but with the power of Next.js and with the power of JavaScript, this is something which is really awesome and I really loved it. Now let's see how we can store this data inside MongoDB. So I'm going to go to MongoDB Node.js. We'll get a MongoDB connector. So we have this MongoDB Node.js driver and connect to MongoDB usage examples. So the very first thing that we need to do is npm i mongodb so let's open our terminal let me open this terminal npm i mongodb and this will install mongodb and then we can simply import mongo client like this let's go to insert operations and insert a document and i'll simply show you how to insert a document in mongodb and instead of writing all this code using an api this is my connection string. Let me format the document, format document. Where is my connection string? Let's open MongoDB Compass and I'm going to use my local instance of MongoDB. This is going to be my connection string. Let's connect to this MongoDB local cluster and the name of the database is insert DB. Let's say database.collection is haiku and let's say title is is equal to we are going to use, we are going to use this, this object. So we have, okay, so it is giving me a lot of errors for some reason. I think all these are old errors and we will have to simply look into how our data was looking. So let, let me fix this code. Let me fix this code. So we'll have to move this import outside. I want to quickly run you guys through this. Okay. So what exactly are we submitting is something that we'll have to see name, email and message. So I'll say contact, contact and then the collection name is going to be contact and let me say server actions is going to be the name of the database and contact is uh, going to be the collection then we have name and how about i directly give form data as an object but extract data from form data and we have this get method actually which is great so we can do form data dot get so I can say name form data dot get or rather data dot get name and once again I'll say message is going to be data dot get message and then again I'll say what else do we have we have email so email is going to be data dot get email and let's see if we can insert this inside inside the database so instead of saying haiku dot insert one i want to call it contact dot insert one so let's change this haiku to contact and let's see if anything else is missing in this code i don't think anything else is missing in this code so let's see if everything is running fine now can i restart the server just to make sure everything works Let's not try to submit this form. I just submitted this form and 
I'm waiting for this app to compile and yes, a document was inserted with ID this and let's see if we have this database. So as of now, we don't have any database called server actions in a local host, but the moment I refresh this, we have the server actions. Let's open it and let's see if we have name message and email and we don't have name message and email because the values are blank, which is a problem because I did not fill any values. So let's say Harry email at harry.com and message is going to be hey this this is a message and let's click submit and let's see if this is submitted inside the database now let's refresh so i will simply refresh and yes as you can see the data has been inserted so this is how next year's server actions work in a nutshell let's now try to host this application so I log into my Akamai developer account. Let's click on create Linode and I'm going to quickly provision a Linode. So let's select Ubuntu 22 LTS. A lot of people ask me why I always go for Ubuntu 22 LTS. Why not Debian? Why not something else? I just happen to use this a lot. So I'm pretty comfortable with this. If you want to use something else, feel free to use it. Let's go for a Nanode. And I always choose Nanode because I want to show you that even on a Nanode, you can host very powerful applications. So I just want to make a point by choosing a Nanode and let's click on create Linode and this will provision Linode for me. Let me open this terminal and let's copy this SSH code. In fact, I'll have to wait for some time for this Linode to provision and once it is provisioned, I'll be back. So our machine is now provisioned. Let's type yes. And let's type the password and I'm waiting for, oops. I'm just wondering why this password is not working. Yes, it worked. And I will be using FileZilla to transfer files to my server. So let's generate an output. And in order to generate the output, I'll simply Google search next is 13 output export and in order to deploy a static export you'll have to say output export inside your next config note that this is not going to make the server action work because we don't have the server at place we'll also not have mongodb installed but just for the sake of deploying it i want to show you how to deploy it once you have everything at place you might want to deploy your backend separately but let's do it we are going to simply say output export in next js config so next.config.js will have output export. And after we have done this, we can now say next build. And let's see what the build command is inside package.json. So npm run build, npm run build will build the application and also generate an output folder. So I'll show you that output folder, how it looks like. And in order for that output folder to serve the files, I will have to install Apache 2. So sudo apt update and let's see where the output folder is. So it has not created an out folder because server actions are not supported with static export. So let's do one thing. Let's remove the server action because they are not supported with the static export. And I'll also remove this action is equal to from or form. I'll remove this just for the time being and I'll show you how to export it now. So if you say npm run build, it should create a folder called out and you should be able to deploy that folder. So let's wait and it says server actions are not supported with static export. Okay, so it, it's saying that you have enabled server actions, you, you need to disable it. So I'll have to disable it from the next config. Let's try it once again. And this time it should generate an out folder for sure. And in the meantime, I'm going to install Apache 2. So apt install Apache 2 will install Apache 2 inside this machine. And as you can see, this out folder has been generated. We'll reveal it in Finder. And we are going to upload it to the server using FileZilla. So let's close and let's go to our Akamai account. Let's copy this IP address and I'll say root and port is going to be 22 and I'll punch in my password and let's quick connect and inside a folder called var www so I'll say slash var slash www slash html 
I'll upload this out folder or the content of out folder. So let's go to this out folder and let's open this out folder and drag all the contents of this out folder here. So I'll upload it here and it will ask me, do you want to replace this file? Yes, I want to overwrite this file for sure. I want to see my next JS application in place of the default Apache HTML. Now let's restart the Apache server. So sudo server Apache to restart. Oops, so it says sudo service, sorry, not server, service Apache to restart. And yes, Apache 2 has been restarted. Let's go to this IP address and let's see if we are able to see our app in action. Yes, we can see this app. So I hope that you really enjoyed this video and you are able to understand how Next.js server actions are going to work in Next.js 13. Now let me tell you something that Next.js 13's server actions is still an alpha feature. It's still an experimental feature and it might change in future, but this is going to be very game changing and you can watch out for how the changes are made and there are very less chances that the syntax is going to change but again we all will have to watch out for that i hope that this video was helpful thank you so much guys for watching this video and i will see you next time